our heart for thanksgiving. Let us just not be weary, Lord, and be thankful. And Father, we give you the glory and all the praise this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, oh God. We thank you. We worship your name. We worship your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Well, good morning, church. Good morning, Revolution Church. Hope you guys are doing well. Happy Thanksgiving week. Happy Thanksgiving week to our Facebook family online this morning. Thank you guys for worshiping with us this morning. If you don't mind, comment where you're listening from. We'd love to see where the gospel is going. And just know that how many souls are actually being reached throughout this, this county, this state. And, and, and you've gone to the Lord as we continue to help Sam and those orphans. Father, we know that, that his word goes forth. And we're just excited today. I wanted to share a passage of scripture this morning out of 1 Thessalonians 5.16. It's actually 5, 16 through 18. But the first thing says, always be joyful, right? Always be joyful. Isn't it hard to do sometimes? But, man, if we can always be joyful, then it says, never stop praying, right? Never stop praying. And then it says, be thankful in all circumstances that for this is God's will, right? He's already done it. He's already given it to us because we belong to him. So let's just have that passage as our uh, scripture going into Thanksgiving week, knowing that, man, we can just always give him the glory in all circumstances and never, never stop praying. Well, guys, I don't know if you are excited as I am, but I am ready to give. Who's ready to give today? Guys, we know when we give that people get blessed, right? People get saved through giving, and that's, that's kind of hard to wrap your mind around sometimes, but when you give, people actually get saved. We continue to allow Pastor Nathan to be able to be our shepherd and to guide us as a congregation to lead us into, into the county to be able to share the good news of Jesus. There's always all kind of ways we can give today, guys. We can do our barn, barn offering. If you give by check, make it payable to Revolution Church. Drop it in our big barn in the back because our goal is to not stay here, but it's to get a barn, right, and get land that God has already blessed us with to build a barn, to continue to share the gospel and be able to worship in our community. You can do online giving at revolutionatl.org. Uh, you can text to give, 84321, and you can do Cash App, and you can also do Venmo App. No matter what you do, guys, God will bless you, not, not let you grow weary of doing good, right? Because in, in, in due time, we will reap if we don't grow weary. So let's just remember that today. Guys, let's just remember that. So we just let's just pray over our blessings, to the, pray over our offering today. Let God bless them. So, Lord, we just thank you for today for our offerings and our tithes, Father. We thank you that you're going to just open up the heavens, Lord, and continue to, to bless what we give, Father. May it go forth, Father. May it be our first fruit, Lord, our offerings and our tithes, just to honor you, Lord, and honor our church, Father. It's not about any man or anything, getting anything like that. It's about honoring you with what we have because, hey, you give us 100%. All we got to do is honor you with just a tenth, Lord. So we thank you for that, Lord, and we honor your name and bless you today, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody that agrees said amen. Hallelujah. How's everybody doing today? Y'all glad to be in church? Come on, show some excitement, man. You got dressed and come on, you got out here, man, and everybody showed up. Man, it was looking a little skimpy earlier, but man, y'all got out of bed and came on in here anyway. We're so glad you guys are here. I don't believe you're going to be disappointed. God has good things for us. Hallelujah. Uh, before I get started in the message, I wanted to say that we got something coming up December 3rd at 7 p.m. right here at the church. It's called Saturday Night Life, Okay. We're going to come in here, and we're going to do things a little bit different. It's going to be like a church service, so, but it's going to be a really good time uh, for young adults and uh, 
you know, older adults, uh, for everybody, okay, to come in and on a weekend, instead of, you know, doing something crazy on the weekend, uh, like watching a stupid football game, you know, just, just come out and actually hear from the Lord and be charged up, okay? Because we all know that when you watch sports or, or you go to events where there's a winner and a loser, you can either come out on the good end or you can come out on the bad end. But when you come Saturday night, you're going to come out on the good end. 100% of the time, you are going to be lifted up and you're going to be charged up. But we're going to have, it's going to be different things going on, giveaways. It's just going to be different. So I want you guys to make plans to come out. And, and you may say, well, you know, I'm not really into like doing church on Saturday night. Uh, well, just get into it, okay? It's not going to hurt you, I promise you, okay? Whatever you're not going to, whatever you're going to do instead of that, unless it's, you know, there is important stuff going on. I'm not, I don't want to belittle that, but this is an important time as a church. We're going to be reaching out to the community. I'm going to actually be sharing an event, okay, on Facebook. I would like it if you guys, if y'all see it, share it, share it, okay? Because you never know who may show up and who may be changed for the rest of, the, rest of their life, amen? I also want to recognize... Uh, an elder that's in the house today, Brother Don. Y'all give it up for Brother Don. Glad you're here today. I like it. I like it. He is, uh, he's taking notes on me. He'll be talking to me after the service about anything that I need to be straight on. So, Don, you, you got my permission, man. Tear it up. I leave. But we're glad you're here today, sir. Thank you so much for being with us today. We're honored to be in your presence. Um, what's your age, Don? How old are you? 84. 84 years young. I mean, that's good, man. Still getting around and doing it. How many of y'all can look at Don and go, you know what? I'm going to be like Don when I get 84. Amen? He's an inspiration. I want to be like that. I, wanna be, I don't want to be that 84-year-old that's just kind of can't do nothing. And Belinda's feeding me oatmeal. <laughs> I don't want to be that way, okay? Not that that wouldn't be mine. I mean, her feeding me oatmeal and everything. But I, I want to be strong and I want to be vibrant, amen, doing some stuff. And guess what? God will renew your your, your years, he'll renew your strength I and mean, just give you youth because this church is full of all ages. We got some young people that can't even keep their eyes open past 8 o'clock. And then you got some older people that, man, we get cranked up after 8 o'clock, okay? I look at this young generation, I'm going, whew, I don't know, when they're getting dark at 4 o'clock, you know, it is kind of hard to stay up, you know what I'm saying? It's like, what time is it, 7.30? Oh, my gosh, it feels like midnight. <laughs> I love it, y'all. I'm just going to be real with you. I love it. If it got dark at 2 o'clock, be fine with me. I don't care. I'm in construction, so when it starts getting dark, I get to go home. So if it's dark at 2 o'clock, guess what Nathan's going to be doing? He's going to be going home. So it's a blessing for me. All of you that have to work under the lights, it ain't a blessing for y'all. <laughs> but anyway, I'm glad you guys are here. And uh, we do have several things going on here. How many of y'all received the text in church about the luggage and the backpacks? Okay. Uh, just used ones and stuff like that. That actually goes to help foster kids that are making transitions. Uh, so we, uh, we want to collect those for the next two Sundays. We also have a ministry in here called Angel Tree, okay, that Miss uh, Belinda, uh, we got two Belindas in the house, okay. <laughs> Miss Belinda here, uh, not my Belinda, but this one, she's actually um, uh, over doing Angel Tree, which is a ministry to where they take gifts to uh, you know, families that their parents are in jail. And it's a blessing. Okay, so if you'd like to be involved with that, see Miss Belinda after the service, how you might can donate or get involved with that. And then Miss Connie's doing one, too. She's a part of one that uh, she texted us the other day, and it really, it helps foster kids, too, right, uh, Connie? So, uh, <clears throat> again, we have, you know, several opportunities for us to be a blessing to, uh, you know, people that, you know, hey, man, look, this can be a, a lonely time of the year, you know, for many people, uh, but especially those that are young and don't have no family. You know, I mean, it really is. And there's a lot of young people out there that don't have a family at all, and they're moving around, or either their family's in jail. And come on, that's, that's, not, that's not good. So really a, a gift or, you know, uh, a little bit of, you know, love like that really goes a long way. So if you would like to get involved with those things, you can, you can see Mary on one of them, and then you can see Belinda on another, and you can see Connie. I would like to tell you all about it, but I don't know all about it. So talk to the ones that know all about it. I may butcher it up and make you, you be given to some wild thing out in Africa somewhere that <laughs> don't even exist. So let's just talk to them and hallelujah. And then also December 11th, after the service, we would like to meet with all the young adults and the parents of youth. I uh, would love to meet with you guys after the service. We're going to give you all some finger foods and snacks. And I just want to share with you about the vision of Revolution Church as we move forward in 2023. Because I'm telling you something, we about to get cranked up. I'm telling you, we about to go places. We about to get out there and throw the net to young people. Um, we, uh, this past week, we went to McDonough High School. 
um, us and maybe five others was in the cafeteria. I'm thinking, I walked in thinking, because it's supposed to be like a, a round table discussion, parents and all that. So I'm thinking we're going to be in the midst of hundreds of people. It's sad how many parents don't even care. That was shocking to me. I'm thinking, man, if there's ever a day you need to stick your head into a meeting like this, it's now. I mean, there's some crazy stuff going on. There's crazy stuff on the horizon. But anyway, me, Belinda, and Lori, and uh, three other people with cameras was taking pictures. We got to meet the principal of McDonough High School. And we was able to, the church was able to. We typed, Belinda typed up a nice letter, and we gave her a letter with a gift card for her and her husband and her family from the church. And basically just saying, we would like to partner with you at this school. How could we be of service? How could we you know, do something for you guys. How could we serve y'all? So we're believing God that's going to open up some doors to where we might can get in and get in with the faculty and the staff and, and begin to start doing some things because, again, we are called to go, not sit, okay? That's what the church is called to do is go. He blesses us so we can go and make a difference. That's why it's very important for you to believe God for increase on your jobs. More money, you can do more things for God. Little money, you do little things for God. Amen? So let's just continue to believe God. And this, this message today is going to kind of be something to where I'm going to be talking about that. Uh, but before I do, we have been talking about faith for a couple weeks. For those that have been here, those that have not been here, we have kind of been on this, this mission of talking about faith. Because we found out that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So again, if we don't have faith or we have little faith, man, it, it could cause us problems in this life. Faith is the currency by which we receive and get things from God. It's the only way you're going to receive from God is by faith. Because when you got saved, did you see anything happen when you got saved? No. There was something done on the inside of you that you couldn't see, but it was done by faith through grace. Jesus Christ came in and re just renewed your, your, your spirit. Amen? Well, it's the same thing with everything else God has for us. It's by faith that we receive these things. So I've just been really on a mission. This is going to be a little bit different today, okay, even though it's about faith, but it's going to be a little bit different. But the question I've asked um, the last few weeks is, what is faith? Does anybody know what faith is? Well, the Bible gives you that answer. In Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says that faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So your faith in God for what you ask him for is what you hold on to until you get what you asked him for. Faith is the evidence that God's going to bring what you asked him to you. Now, you've got to have some patience with that. You've got to give God time because he works through people to make things happen. Now, there can be instant blessings and instant manifestations. Yeah, it happens. It happens all through the Bible. It happens today. But the reality is, is God works on his time, not your time. He does it when he's ready to do it. Not when you think he should do it. Well, why ain't God doing this? I need it to be done today. Matter of fact, I needed it to be done two weeks ago. Well, see, God don't see that the way you see it. He wants you to just stay connected to him and trusting that he's going to do it. And how do we do that? I'll get into that a little bit, but it really goes back to December, I think, 24th. Is it? I'm not December. November 24th this year. It's going to be Thanksgiving. We give thanks, right? You give thanks. That is what you do while you're waiting on Jesus to get you what you need. You thank him in advance. And we'll get into more of that a little later on. So how do we get faith? Romans 10, 17 tells us. Paul said this. He said, so then faith comes by hearing and by hearing by the word of God. The more of this book you get on the inside of you, the greater your faith is going to be. It will literally change your life. You will look at situations different. You won't look at problems the way the world looks at problems. Because God has a solution for every problem that you and I are going to face in this life. Period. It don't matter what you go through. He's got it for us. And he will see us through every single time. There's nothing you're going to stumble across and God's going to go, Oh, I didn't see that coming. Wow. That's a blind side. Jesus, have you ever seen that before? No. He's made a way of escape through everything we'll actually go through in life. But we have to get in the Word. we got to be able to see what He sees. And the only way you can do that is by getting in this Bible here. And then we say, uh, then the, the next question I ask is, how important is faith? Hebrews eleven six 6 tells us, but without faith, it is impossible. It's not just a little bit. It's impossible to please God. It says, uh, to walk with God and please Him. 
For whoever comes near to God must necessarily believe that God exists and that he rewards those who earnestly and diligently seek him. He's a good boss. Amen. He pays very well. And he can pay when there ain't nobody else paying. You know, he don't have inflation in heaven. He don't deal with that. He don't deal with lack. You're not going to go to heaven and, and see a lack of anything. Okay, now we hear of lack on the earth. We hear rumors of lack, but does that have to be you? Do you have to experience that? Not if you're a child of God, you don't. Because the Bible says we're in the world, but we're not of the world. When you become a Christian, you step into a whole nother kingdom, my friend. You step into a whole nother place. And now God is your source. He's going to take care of you. The world, they look at the source as their job, their retirement, their social security, they look at that as their source. That is not the source, my friend. Those things can dry up quick. They can disappear just like that. But if you trust in God, His riches, His stuff don't fade away. Things of this world will fade away. So Thanksgiving is coming up, and we all know what that means. Lots of food. There will be tables full of all kinds of food. Don't you all agree? And you may say, well, I don't really have a Thanksgiving that I'm going to this year, okay? Have you ever been to a Thanksgiving meal? Have you ever seen one, okay? If you've ever been to one and seen one, there is a lot of food on the table. There's turkey, there's dressing, sweet, there's stuff you don't eat all year that show up on that table. I'm thinking, man, I ain't seen that in a year, okay? I mean, people whipping out dishes, man, I'm telling you, they just, you ain't seen them. I mean, green bean casserole, sweet corn, I mean, come on, man. Pecan, not pecan, pecan pie. Pecan. For all y'all that wasn't born in the South, let me help all y'all. Pecan. If you're in the South, we don't say pecan, okay? Y'all say pecan. We say pecan. What do we say? Do we say pecan? We don't say pecan. We're about to have strife all up here in the church, man, right now. We're about to throw down. They're jumping in my sermon telling me how we say pecan pie in the south. We say pecan. No, you know. Well, let's skip that and go to pumpkin. How about pumpkin? We all can say pumpkin, right? Pumpkin pie, man. So, so, so the point is, is there's going to be a lot of stuff on that table right there. And you know that God has a table that he has prepared and set before us. Amen? That has a lot of things on it as well. I believe that Thanksgiving Day can and should be a reminder that we are to live a life of Thanksgiving for all the good things God has done for us. So Thanksgiving Day is not a day to where we go, okay, it's a day we set aside to be thankful. No, for a Christian, it should be a reminder that we should thank God all the time. And I'm telling you, when you thank God for things, I mean, I was doing a wedding, uh, I, I officiated a wedding last night, and uh, the bride and the groom, I knew the groom. Uh, he kind of hung out with our kids when he was younger. So we kind of, we kind of, you know, was uh, with their family as they were being raised and everything. But anyway, at the end of the ceremony, I pronounced them husband and wife, and I announced them to the congregation. Well, he got, grabs his bride, and as he's walking down, he turns back and he says, hey, thank you. I thought, that was so sweet. I have never had anybody do that right there. But it just goes to something about when you're thankful, it sticks out, guys. And I'm telling you, when you take the time, and not that you're obligated, but when somebody takes you out to eat, somebody does something for you, saying thank you, it matters, man. And it really matters whether you're going to go out to eat again <laughs> with me, okay? If I take you out to eat and you don't say thank you, you know what? Not that that's going to be the reason I don't, because if the Lord tells me to do it, I'm going to do it. But, man, I, I will remember, man, they didn't even really say thank you for that $200 meal. So, hey, let's... Now, you know that last person we took out? They were thankful. Let's get this. Call them up, okay? But being thankful. Kids, be thankful to your parents. Thank you, Mom and Dad, that I have a roof over my head. Thank you, Mom and Dad, that I have clothes. Instead of complaining about what you don't have, grab your phone or your device and walk up to your parents and go, you know what? I thank you for this right here. Thank you. I appreciate that. I couldn't have this without you. Instead of, what are you doing? Oh, I want a new one. I want a better one. This ain't no good no more. It's out of date. Oh, uh, well, get a job. Buy your own. Okay? But I'm just saying, be thankful for what you got. Amen? Amen? Man, I get on that subject, I'm starting to get really riled up, man. Come on. <laughs> kids. No, but parents can do the same thing. Be thankful on your job. Amen. Your boss hands you a check, text him. Say, thank you. I appreciate this. You know what I'm saying? Be thankful all the time. Let people see thankfulness all the time where you're at. Be thankful. I mean, just be thankful. 
It's attractive. Amen. You know, complainers, nobody wants to be around them. People be arguing, I mean, just griping about everything. Nobody wants to be around that. I mean, we, we have to because we work around some of them. But, man, you can't wait till that bell goes off and you get in your car and get out of there. Okay? Because they're complaining about everything. Nobody wants to be around complainers because complainers go nowhere in life. Nowhere. Thankful people, you see them just go from one level to the next. And people be getting mad at those people. Why are they going up there and we can't? Why don't you listen to yourself? Record your daily conversation. It has a lot to do with your elevation. I can promise you that right there, okay? Just being thankful. There's times I'll, I'll text my boss. You know, he'll give me a bonus or do something. I thank you. I appreciate it. You know? I mean, he don't have to do that. But I'm thankful for that. Amen? And I mean, you know, when it's a lot of money, it's even easier to say thank you. <laughs> But today I want to talk to you about a table that God has set up for us to enjoy the great things he has provided for us. You need a fork and a knife, usually, to enjoy your Thanksgiving meal, okay? I know you could probably eat some of it with your hands, and maybe you, you know. How many of y'all have had to go to two Thanksgivings in one day? Anybody in here? That, my friends, is torture. That ain't even right. That should be illegal. There should be a law that, look, no, if you've already had one meal, you can't go to a next one, Okay? Because you know as well as I know that when you go to that first meal and you have this thought, well, i got to save a little room because I'm going to another one. You ain't saving no room for the next one, okay? You, it's going, you're going to dig in, and then you're going to go to that next one, and you don't want to be rude, so you fix a plate. And then, man, Friday is really, truly Black Friday for you. <laughs> you're blacking out. I mean, you got all kinds of stuff going on, man. But you can't say no. I mean, it's good. I mean, don't you agree with me? Thanksgiving meals are good, y'all. Man, I tell you, one year I was actually, uh, I went through this 12-week workout and started in October, ended in December. Well, guess what? I had to go right through with my workout and watching what I eat. It was right through Thanksgiving. Now, I did it, but that was the last time I did it. I will never do that again, my friend. I don't care how I look. I can look like Humpty Dumpty just fell off the wall. I'm eating Thanksgiving. And then we'll get back on something later, okay? I'm telling you, I am not going to watch that stuff go out, show up. And just Yeah, man, I'll take a little green beans, a little water. <laughs> Literally, that's what I did. I ate a little vegetables. But, man, I'm thinking, no, that's, that's, that's torture, man. So we're not going to do that. So, but anyway, but uh, you need a fork and knife to enjoy the Thanksgiving. But you will need faith in God to enjoy God's table of blessings. We're going to read Psalms 23. And I think everybody's familiar with Psalms 23. It's a beautiful psalm. But I just wanted to highlight one area, but it's only six verses, so we're going to read all of it. And we're going to read it in the Amplified Version, okay? So it's going to be a little bit longer. But it's such a beautiful psalm. But there's one particular verse that I really want to highlight today because I think it's so cool. But in verse 1, it says, The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and shield me. I shall not want. So you as a believer today, should you ever want for anything? Never. Well, Nathan, I need something right now. I'm broke as a joke. I have no house. I have no car. I don't have nothing. Listen, that's why you need Jesus. Because when you go to Jesus, he fulfills all the things you need. He will give you what you want. He'll give you what you'll need. Now, it may not be that day, but ba did you lose everything in a day? No. A lot of times it took years sometimes for us to start doing without. Why don't you give God a week or two? Can we do that? Just give him a little time. Stay in faith. Say things that are positive. Speak out of a thankful heart. Thanking God that he's taking you places. Always being that bright light in a dark room. Always being upbeat and positive. I mean, ready to go. No matter what you're going through, God's bringing you through it. And you keep that attitude. You watch. You won't be there long. Amen? You will be brought out of that. So he says, you shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul, my life. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod to protect, your staff to guide. They comfort and console me. God is with you in the dark, in the light. Everywhere you go, God is with you and he will see you through. Never let go of God's hand when you're going through life. Now there's times God will squeeze your hand and say, Hey baby doll, we don't need to be doing this. You need to listen to that and say, God, you're right. Because I'm getting ready to walk into a room you ain't going to walk in with me. So we have to let go of the hand and walk into places that God didn't tell us to go. And you own your own when you do that. 
Does he want that for you? No. That's your free will. But when God squeezes your hand and says, sweetheart, look, we don't need to do that. You need to obey that. You don't need to do it. Because there's danger up ahead. And every one of us have had that little tug inside of our heart that says, hey, sweetheart, this ain't good for you. You need to stop this. Watch your mouth. Watch what you say. Watch where you go. Watch what you're doing. Don't listen to that anymore. Don't watch that anymore, sweetheart. But I paid $45 to watch it, God. Do you understand? I need to watch this movie. I got four bags of popcorn here and a big Coke that looks like the size of this seat. I got to sit here and watch this movie, okay? All right. No, we've got to listen to the Lord. The Lord will lead you, amen, into green pastures. Hallelujah. Quiet waters, all these good things. But verse 5 is where I wanted to get to. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'm going to go ahead and read the rest, and we're going to come back to that. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy. Now, the King James just says goodness and mercy. But like the Amplified, it adds that, that your unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever throughout all my days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. So I'm going to dwell in the church. And I'm going to dwell in his presence when I'm not in the church. He covers both areas, okay? He don't tell you, look, you are the church. You don't have to go to a building. That's not where anywhere in Scripture, okay? Now, I know that's some theologians that are on Facebook, Instagram, and those places. They, they tell you, you know, the prophets of doom and gloom and agony on me. You know, you don't have to go to church. You are the church. Well, listen, what Scripture are you reading from? There is no Scripture. How many of y'all know that you're going to sit here for two and a half hours today, Don, okay? And when you leave, you will be better than you when you came in here. It will not hurt you. Amen? If you want to look at your watch and go, man, is he about done? I mean, do we, need to, we need to go. I'm tired. I need to go do something. Look, you need to sit down and tune in and let God feed your spirit. Your head don't want to be here sometimes. But your spirit is sitting there in that seat going, feed me more. Feed me more. We need it. And our spirit needs to get stronger than our head and our flesh. Because our head and our flesh drag us around all the time, okay, and, and having us do and say things we shouldn't. How about we get the spirit man big and full, ready to kick the devil's brains in, amen? So we're going to dwell in the house and in the presence of the Lord forever. But verse 5 is interesting to me. When he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Not enemy, enemies. So what are our enemies? Most people would say the devil. Have anybody seen the devil? Has anybody seen demons? But I bet you you've had bad thoughts. I bet you've had some things, uh, depression and anxiety and fear. You've had some things like that that try to creep in and control your life. Those are enemies, y'all. Those are enemies that we have to deal with on a daily basis. Anxieties. Fear, confusion, depression. It's all around us waiting and willing to get into our hearts and in our minds. But God has prepared this table. I wrote down some. You got, you got bad thoughts. You got sickness. Is that, is that not an enemy? Does sickness come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly? Hey, I'm cancer. I want to be your best friend. I'll help you live 20 more years. No, no. These are enemies. Disease, drugs, alcohol, porn. Is porn good for you? Is watching naked people on a screen good for you? No, it's not good for you, okay? It's not. There's other ways that are. Get married. Amen? I'm in church. Y'all can say amen, right? I can't, I can't, we can look at each other naked all day long. We've got a certificate. We're married in the eyes of God. But I'm not called by God to look at other people that don't have clothes on. Amen? We're not. Porn is an enemy. It's coming to kill, steal, and destroy. Fear, anxiety, worry, debt. Is debt, is that, is that a friend? My friend, debt. Get in debt and pay high interest. Is that a friend? That is not a, that's, listen, and I'm not, listen, I know we've all had to borrow money, okay? This is not about, you know, dampening your parade. We've all been there. We've had to borrow money. But how many of you know that God's perfect will is for us to pay cash for stuff? He don't want us to have to pay all this debt. Do y'all like paying? Do y'all ever get the invoice that shows what you're paying for the principal and what you're paying for the interest? Have y'all seen that? Do you get excited about that? Knowing that that money that you're paying for interest, you're never going to get back. It's gone forever. And if you buy a house for a 30-year loan, go check it out. Look what it looks like. 
Way more is going to the people that don't care about you at all, all right, than the part that's going toward the house you're living in. All right? You pay way too much for stuff, but we got to have it. Got to have it now. Got to have it now. And I'm telling you, if you'll be patient and wait on the Lord and start small, okay, buy what you can afford, okay, that's a really good interest rate, work your way up to saving money to where you don't have to live in debt. I've been in debt, and I've been out of debt. Out of debt's way better, y'all. You get to do things and not even really care about it, okay? You can have a lot more fun. So if you're in debt today, look, use your faith to get out of debt, okay? God will help you get out of debt. Idols, sexual immorality, hatred. You know hatred's an enemy? When you get raging mad about something on the road or in your family, and you got to blurt it out and let everybody know what's on your mind, no, that ain't a good thing, y'all. Ain't a good. It's an enemy. Selfishness. Oh, yeah, that's an enemy. So, so God has prepared a table, okay? And I got this right here as an illustration of, uh, of food. We see this table full of food. But I want you to picture that God sets the table up in front of all of these enemies I just said. But he's got something that's going to help you. He's got peace. He's got healing. He's got joy. He's got sound mind. He's got things that we need that are going to help us be able to come against the things that are coming against us in this world. Because the enemies are coming. Y'all know that, right? They're coming. The tempter's coming. Amen? But we got to be ready. So God has prepared a table of blessing before us that we can pull up a chair and get whatever we need to help us overcome anything that the enemy may bring our way. All we need to, to take anything off the table of the Lord is faith. Faith that God will do what he said he would do. God's table has promises on it for you to use and receive the blessing that comes from that promise. Hebrews 4.16, which is one of my favorite scriptures. This is what Jesus did for us. One of the things he did for us right here. He saved us. He cleansed us. He paid the payment of all the sin. But he opened up a door to a room that me and you get to walk into right now anytime we want to. It says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Y'all, I'm here to tell you guys, God has prepared a table of blessing for us. And not only that, he is actually inviting us to the room where the table is prepared. So we actually get to go into the room where the table is spread out with all the things that you and I need to be successful in this life. I don't have to look to the government. I don't have to look to my parents. I don't have to look to anybody to get what I need, and neither do you. God will get you whatever you need. Amen? He'll even get you what you desire. We found out last week if we delight ourselves in the Lord, He will give us the desires of our heart. He'll give you desires. God ain't withholding anything from them that love Him. Amen? He's just withholding things from people that don't love him. There's a key in that word. God's not withholding anything from those that love him. Those that don't love him, you ain't getting what he's got. No more than you would be giving a bunch of people something that don't like you. Cussing you. Blaming you for everything going on in the world. It's God's fault. Well, if God's so big, why don't he fix all this stuff? Well, you know what? <laughs> you so small, why don't you get fixed? Amen? Amen, won't you get fixed up? Won't you fix you? You know what I'm saying? It ain't God's fault that this world's in a mess that it's in. He had nothing to do with eating the fruit in the garden. No. Did he do it? Did you see God and uh, Adam and Eve over there eating fruit together? Man, this is good stuff, man. Wow, this is good. I told y'all not to do it. Let's all do it together. Well, this is good. I like this. No, God wasn't doing that. He told them don't do it. They did it. What happened? Sin came onto the earth. Okay, they died that day. So God's all about us not doing some things, amen? But for those that love him, he ain't holding nothing back, y'all. He wants to open it up and give you whatever you need today. Whatever you need. But you got to do it God's way, not your way. Come on, y'all. I mean, come on. Jesus didn't go through all of that and hang on a cross and take those whips and those stripes and those thorns, all that, and pay the price for us just to think that we're just going to walk up to him and live any way we want to and ask him for stuff and it's just going to happen? No, that ain't going to happen. That's how this thing works, y'all. Okay, this ain't no drive through You don't just drive through and say, yeah, I'll take uh, you know, some healing for cancer. But I got to go shopping today. I ain't got time to read my Bible and go to church. I ain't got time to do none of that. No, I got to go. I got a busy life. I got a party to go to. Hey, ma'am, if you'll just stay for a couple of days, I'll teach you about healing and God will heal you. Well, I ain't got time for that. Just pray for me. See, everybody wants that instant stuff. Pray for them. I got to go. I got to go. Listen, we have to wait on the Lord. Amen. He blesses those that wait on him. God has set up a table before us. 
But he has also invited us into the room where the table is set up. We get to go into the room where he is personally and get whatever we need to live a victorious life on this earth. So that sounds good, but how do I take it from God and make it work in my life? How do I get that to work? I hear you, Pastor. Man, you're sounding good up there. I know God's got some good stuff on there, but how do I get that? And obviously, I would say you have to get it by faith. But a lot of people don't even know how to use their faith. They don't know how to activate what God's given them. You know, the greatest gift that you and I have ever been, been given is the gift of salvation. We have been given the gift of salvation. That means when we die and we're saved, we get to go to heaven. That's the greatest gift. There's nothing greater than that. And if that's all Jesus did, I think I would be in a company of, of people that would agree with me that that'd be great. That would be great. I mean, if, if that's all he did was save us and we was just meant to, you know, get AK-47s and guns and do the best we can down here and kill as many people as we can to keep all the enemies away from us and just fight our battles down here. We don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to fend for ourselves, and then when we die, we get to go to heaven. We all would agree that that's good. We don't have to go to hell, okay? But Jesus did way more than that, y'all. He did way more than that. He has given us things to live a life just the way he lived. How many days was Jesus sick on the earth? How many days did Jesus wake up depressed on the earth? How many days did Jesus wake up and he didn't know where his next meal was going? He, he was hungry. He didn't get, to get no food. He was, he was without. No, Jesus didn't have these issues, okay? You know why? Because his trust was in God. His trust was in his Father. And he never did without. Jesus came to give us an example by which to live by. He did what he did as a son of God, as a man, not as God. The Bible says in Philippians, he laid aside all his mighty weight and glory. And then he stepped into the earth as a man, just like we are in this earth. Okay? And he decided that he was going to put God first in everything he did. And the result was him doing exactly what God told him to do. Well, Nathan, man, everybody sins. Everybody messes up. You know that. Everybody messes up. No, they don't. Everybody don't go around sinning all the time. There is people that actually live a whole day without sinning. Y'all know that's possible, right? We don't have to sin. Yes, there's times we fall short, but we ask God to forgive us and we get back up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we don't have to live that life of, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. You know, I'm just plugging her on, man. I, you know, we all miss it. We all fall short. Well, no, my Bible says in Ephesians that he has seated me high above everything. So if I'm seated up there with Jesus, then I'm not going to walk around confessing that I'm an old sinner and I just can't help it. I'm just an old worm. I'm just trying to trudge through life, trying to get by. No, I am not a worm. I am a child of the Most High God, and so are you. I was once dead, but now I'm alive. I am in Christ, and he's in me. I don't have to live that way, and neither do you. And when there's something that's on my body that don't belong, cancer comes knocking at my door. Hey, Nathan, you have stage five cancer. Okay, thank you, Doc. Give me a hug. I love you. You the man. Thank you for letting me know that. I walk outside and I tell the devil, now you take that cancer back to hell where it belongs. I'm a child of God. It didn't belong on Jesus, and it ain't going to belong on me. I stand my ground. Well, what if I die fighting a good fight of faith? What if I did die? Believing and trusting in God. Just say I did. I trusted God. I've kept my faith in God and I died. What would Jesus say when I looked at him when I got on the other side? High five me. Way to go, son. Way to go, buddy. Way to do it, man. You stood on the word. You did your part. But there ain't nobody that stood on the word of God that will ever fail. Never, never. You can't show me one in the Bible or anywhere that has took this Bible and applied it to their life and they have failed in life. There is nobody. Period. Okay? Well, I, I prayed that and it didn't work. No, honey. No, no. You prayed it. You had an opportunity to wait for it to work and you failed. This book don't fail. If I had to choose between God failing or you failing, there is no conversation. It's me every time. Every time. God never fails. If there's ever a slight chance that God could fail, why would I serve him? Because I might be the one he fails on. No, our God's perfect. He's never made a mistake, and he never will. He's the healer. He's the provider. He's the protector. But he's also the one that will tell you, don't do something. Quit eating so many Twinkies at 10 o'clock at night. That's not good for your blood sugar. I don't care. By God, I believe God's my healer. I'm going to eat these Twinkies. I don't care what anybody says. Well, he's trying to give you a little heads up. That that many Twinkies is not good before you go to bed. Okay? So he will tell you to do something naturally. 
But sometimes it, we just block all that out and say, no, man, I confess the Bible. I'm healed in Jesus' name. And you're eating stuff you shouldn't be eating and drinking stuff you shouldn't be drinking. You know, if God uses a doctor to talk to you and say, hey, sweetheart, you need to quit doing that. Don't get mad at the doctor. He's just a messenger. He's just letting you know, stop. <laughs> I mean, God uses earthly, but we love the doctors and nurses. And a lot of them are actually being led of the Lord to tell us stuff, and we don't listen. I don't care what they say. By God, I'm delivered from all that stuff. My Jesus is my healer, and I'm just going to do what I want to. Give me another, you know, cheesecake, and, you know, what the heck, man. We drink Cokes all day, man. We snort them. I mean, whatever we need to do. I love Coke. I'm going to drink Coke. No, no. You need to listen to that voice on the inside of you, okay? Listen to God. Hallelujah. Don't ignore him. Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm going to give you a few things that will help you on how to get something from God. And not that this is a formula, okay? Now, I'm, I'm a Christian, man. I, you know, again, when I got saved, I was a heathen going to hell, dope, smoking, drinking. I didn't come from religious groups. I didn't have all that in my background. I came to God. So when I read the Bible, I take it literal, y'all. So I'm just going to give you literally what I feel like the Bible says. And these are things that I've used in my own life and they work, okay? So again, I mean, I know there's maybe other formulas out there. Some people have 20 steps. I like the Bible for dummies. That's, you know, that's what, I need to write a book on that. Because that's for me. Not the dumb, but I just like it simple, y'all. I listen to somebody, man, gives you 25 points, man. It all sounded good, but I ain't even going to remember half of that. I like to give people stuff that you can actually apply to your life right now. Because, guys, I'm not deep, okay? I didn't go to theological school. I didn't do all that. I'd have flunked. I can't do all that. They would have bored me a long time ago, man. I'm just reading the Bible. He said, you know, for God's love the world, he gave his only begotten son. Those who believe in him should not perish, have everlasting life. Boom. Okay, I'm in on that. Let's do it. You know, I ain't got to dissect it. Well, he really meant, you know, that, uh, well, he really meant. I ain't got time for all that, man. My life's short. Your life's short. Give me the, the meat of it, and let's move on with it. So the number one, I'm going to give you like three things, real simple, three things, okay? Number one, to receive something from God, you got to ask God. <laughs> you got to ask him, okay? Don't leave it to happen chance. Well, he knows what I need. He'll give me what I need if he wants to. What? Is there anything else in life that works that way? You walk in the restaurant. I'm just going to sit here. <clears throat> What you want, sir? Uh, I mean, y'all know what I want. Y'all will bring me whatever I want. We don't use that idiotic, what, idiot, how do you say? I want to go idiot, but I want to add some more to it, Don. Is it ideology, is it that? Is that, is that? What'd you say, idiot? Okay. <laughs> ology. We'll throw the ology on the back of it to kind of get a little, you know. But we don't do that in anything else in life. We don't walk on the car lot and we're going to get a car. What you want, sir? I don't know. Y'all know what I want. Y'all give me what I want. You don't walk in Walmart with a buggy and go to the cash register. Sir, did you get what you wanted? Oh, y'all know what I want. Y'all will bring it to me. No, we don't do that. It's, it's stupid, y'all. You God knows what you need and what you want, but he wants you to ask him for it. Amen? Come on, man. I mean, you know, it ain't like God just drops stuff out of heaven. Now, he will bless us because he loves us, but he wants us to ask him. So what is it you need today? What do you need? Ask God for it, Okay. This is John chapter 14. Now, these are the words in red. And I was kind of brought up in my theological studies in my room, okay, in my house, that red letters means Jesus is talking. So Jesus is about to say something. And he's going to say it twice just in case you didn't get it. So verse 13 in John chapter 14, which is a book I would highly recommend, the, the book of John. But it says, you can, ask, you can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it. So what can you ask in his name? Anything. Anything means anything. So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Then he goes to verse 14. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I might do it. I'll think about doing it. I will do it. Anything. See, some of y'all are waiting till the time's right and you have the money in the bank and you've saved up the money to be able to go and get what you want. See, you're trying to do it in your own strength. And as long as you want to do life in your own strength, God will let you. Now, he's not saying that you shouldn't do anything. Yeah, you got your part. But leave God the big part. Let God do some things for you. So if I was to ask you right now, what are you believing God for right now? What have you asked God to do in your life right now? What do you got going on in your life that you've asked God to do right now? And if you don't have nothing, then the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. You're not pleasing your heavenly father. 
He don't expect you to do all this on your own. Why would you need God? Matter of fact, I would say this. There's many dreams that God has placed in the hearts of his people in this room right now. And you're trying to figure out how you can do that dream. If you can do that dream, it wasn't God's dream. Because God's going to give you a dream, honey, that's way bigger than you. That only you trust in him can cause that to come to pass. And some of y'all have big dreams in here. You serve a big God that can do some big things. So again, if you could walk out the dream on your own, it wouldn't from God. Amen? It was just you eating some pizza. Hallelujah. Too much. God wants us to ask him for what you need, just like you would ask someone for the cranberry sauce at the Thanksgiving table. Or macaroni and cheese. Or chicken leg. You're at the table. I mean, come on, we got this big table. Well, if I'm sitting right here, and whatever this is right here, corn, I needed it. Unless I got a real long arm, I'm not going to be able to reach that. So I'm going to ask somebody down here, probably Bob or Tammy. I say, hey, Bob, could you uh, hand me a piece of that corn? So he's going to pick it up with his sanitized hands. And he's going to make his, or he'll probably just pick up the dish. Wouldn't that be better just pick up the dish? Look at that. That's probably more sanitary. Pick up the dish, and he would hand it to me. And then when he handed it to me, what would I say? Say, thank you. Thank you. See, you gotta, you got to ask for what's on the table. If you don't ask for anything on the table, are you just thinking you're going to get it? No, it's not going to happen. Man, that corn looks good down there. I sure would like to have some. That corn will be gone before you get any of that corn with that thinking right there. So anyway, if it is on the table, then you've got to ask for it. If it is in the Bible, then you can ask for it, and he will give it to you. The first thing I would say before you ask the Lord is go to the Bible and find Scripture that backs up what you're asking for. And I, there's plenty of it there, okay? But you've got to search for it. You're getting ready to ask the king of the universe for something. He don't have a lack of anything. He's got all things. He's got access to everything. Everything that's on this earth was made by him, including a Reese's peanut butter cup. It was made by him. It's anointed. I've got a factory waiting on me in heaven. It will be a Reese's factory. They'll be pumping them out straight to my mansion, okay? But I'm just telling you, God has everything. Everything you've seen was made by the particles and the elements of this earth. Nothing was made that God didn't make it, okay? He's, he's, the, he's the creator behind all this. So you're going to ask the creator of all of this for something. And I'm telling you, when you do, okay, get ready. Get ready to see what happens. You serve a big God. But sometimes you just need to dig through this riches and, and this, this gold mine of, of a book and find a scripture and let God lead you through it and then ask him and watch what happens. He will give it to you. Okay, so first we've got to ask God. Number two, we've got to believe that we receive it by faith. So when we ask God for something, we say, thank you, I receive it now by faith. Now my faith in believing that he heard my prayer and that he's going to give me what I asked for, just for example, okay, let me just use an illustration. Say I just, I needed a new phone. And they came out with a new phone. And I really needed a new phone. So I said, Father, I'm in need of this particular phone. And I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to bring me this phone. Okay? Father, I receive it. You said that you would give me the desires of my heart. I need this phone, Father. It's a need of mine. Okay? He also said if I would seek him first, he would give me everything I needed. So I've been seeking you, Lord. So I really need this phone. I'm asking you for this phone. And then I say, Amen. So now I've got to believe and say, thank you, Father, that I have my phone. I don't have it yet, but I'm going to stand in a place of thankfulness knowing that my God is going to bring that to me because I know his character. I know he's not a man that he should lie or a God that he should lie. He's going to give me what I asked. Just like if I was to say to Dwayne, hey, Dwayne, I want to let you know, how much you own your truck? Don't tell me. I'm just saying. Just, you know, okay. <clears throat> don't tell me. I want to pay your truck off and I'll do it next week. Okay? Now, Dwayne knows me, and I would think that Dwayne would probably get excited and say, well, man, thank you, man. He'd probably even give me a hug, say, man, I appreciate you, man. Come on, man. I appreciate it. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for, for doing that for me. I appreciate that. That's awesome. That's a blessing. Is his truck paid off yet? Not yet. I mean, he's thanking me as if it's already paid off, and it ain't paid off. There's no, he don't have a title. He don't have nothing. But he's thanking me knowing my character that I'm going to do what I said I'm going to do. Hey, look, guys, I'm not comparing myself to God by no stretch of the imaginations. But you have somebody way greater than me that says that he'll do for you what you need. And he will not let you down. If we can put that much faith and trust in a person we know, can we not 
put way more faith and trust in somebody like God that's going to do what he said he's going to do? Every time he's going to do it. He will never let you down. Amen? So just remember, guys, that when you, when you ask God for something, believe that you have it. And the, the proof that you believe you have it, you're thankful that you got it before you ever see it. Thank you, Father, that I'm out of this financial trouble. Thank you, Father, that you're bringing me out of this financial mess. Thank you, Father, that I have a place to live. I asked you for a place to live. Now I thank you that I have a place to live. Father, I thank you. Because, see, I have a vehicle right now that's smoking a lot. Not cigarettes. Smoking out the tailpipe. Okay? It's smoking. Is Reed here today? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, it's a, it's a car that really, it's, it, it's, it just it needs help. Okay? It needs help. It needs healing. But I'm in a position to where I'm probably going to need another car, all right? So am I just going to run out there and buy a car? Uh-uh. I'm going to go to God after I finally get her to decide what she wants. <laughs> she, she wants to ride the smoke, smoke car. <laughs> she, she likes paid off. I said, baby, the smoke's in the car. We can't just keep riding around. I'm smelling the smoke in the car. My gosh, this ain't good. <laughs> I mean, I'm surprised Valerie didn't go, hey, could y'all drop me off down the street here? I'll walk, man. I ain't y'all smoking this car, man. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, seriously, there's smoke inside my car. You know, you don't see it, but it's there, okay? But if you look at my car, it's in good shape. But I'm getting ready to be in need of a car, okay? God knows I have need of that before I ever ask him. But I'm going to ask him, and we're going to believe him to get us to that car. Because he knows what we need, amen? Everything you desire, bring it to him, okay? He will bring it to you. And the last, well, let me read the verse. Believe you receive Mark eleven twenty two. It says, so Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Now, why is he saying that? He's saying that to his disciples because earlier, about a day ago, they was walking to another town. They saw this fig tree that looked like it should have figs on it, but it didn't. So Jesus looked at it and he cursed it and said, you wither up and you dry, you are dead. You no longer will you live. Now, you can imagine the disciples off to the side, just like if all of y'all was walking to me and I walked by a peach tree and there wasn't no peaches on it. And then I said, peach tree? You'd be cursed and you're dying right now in Jesus' name. And I walked off. You would probably think I was nuts. This guy just talked to a tree and we're following him. Well, they probably thought the same thing, guys. He's talking to a tree. Well, they go to the next town. But the next day they walk by and guess who noticed the tree was cursed? The disciples. He said, wow, master, that tree that you cursed, it's dried up by the roots. And then Jesus started with this, this saying, right? He says, Jesus answered them. Okay, and said, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, and your mountain could be debt, it could be depression, it could be sickness, it, it could be a, a myriad of things. He said, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will what? Have them. You got to believe God, amen, and trust that he's going to give you that, amen, and talk like you already got it, okay? Now, this ain't no name it, claim it. I know people want to, you know, just bash on that, oh, you part of that name it, claim it church. Listen, I didn't write Mark 11, 23 and 24. Jesus did. He said, whatever you say, you can have. That ain't my words. So if you got a problem, take it up with the one who wrote the book. I didn't write the book. I'm just the messenger. You don't have to do it, Okay? I mean, a lot of Christians don't do half the Bible. <laughs> so, I mean, it's not like anybody's making you do anything. I'm just giving you some suggestions that the master knows what he's talking about. If he says, speak to that mountain, I would speak to the mountain. I wouldn't get to be friends and buddies with it. Hey, what's up, dude? Glad you're around. Debt, depression. <laughs> I mean, no, no, we want to speak to it. Tell it to get out of here. Believe that you have it before you ever see it. That is what faith in God looks like. You are believing that he heard you and that he will give you what you asked for. So just thank him in advance because you know he doesn't lie about giving you what you asked for. Thanksgiving is the language of faith. Thank him every day that you have what he promised you. Number three and the last thing is do not doubt God. But be thankful that God will do what he said he would do. Do not doubt God, but be thankful that God will do what he said he would do. James 1.5 says this, If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. 
For let not that man or woman suppose that they will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man or woman, unstable in all his ways. Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus, for a house. I'm asking you, Father. I've been living in this apartment way too long. I thank you, Lord, for a house. I thank you, Lord, that right now that, that, that we agree, and it could be you and your spouse or whatever, and you agree is touching this, that we agree that we have a house of our own. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us that house. In Jesus' name, amen. Bring, 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 bring. Oh, hey, what's going on, man? Well, how's it going, man? How's everything going? I don't know, man. I've been in this apartment so long. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I want to get a house, but I don't know if it's going to work out. You know, man, I mean, I don't know. It's just it's terrible, man, me living in this apartment, man, and you know, things ain't going right. You know, things ain't, you know, the way, I mean, we just need to get out of it. We don't have enough space. I'm just tired. I don't know what's going to happen, you know. Um, so, all right, man, I'll be praying for you. Okay, man, have a good one. Bye. Hey, man, how's it going with your house? Oh, praise the Lord. God's bringing me a house. God's going to bring me a house. I'm believing God for a house. No, you ain't. You like this. You ain't going to get nothing. If you believe in God for a house and somebody calls you, man, how's it going, man? I tell you what, brother, whew, I'm in this apartment, but let me tell you, God is working on my place right now in Jesus' name. God is moving. There's things happening, man. You're going to be fired up because you're going to see your house. You're going to see it. I heard this guy, I was listening to him the other day, and he weighed about 500 pounds. Has anybody ever weighed 500 pounds? Whew, that's a lot of weight, ain't it? He lost 300 pounds. And you know, they asked him, I said, well, how did you do it? He said, I got this image of me at 200 pounds. And every day I got to working out, I began to see that 200-pound man. I began to see what I was chasing. And shortly, he, there, he got there. He got to that 200-pound mark. I'm telling you, when you begin to see yourself where you ask God to be at, you will begin to get there. But as long as you think it's some fairy tale or some shot in the dark, well, let me shoot a prayer up there. Maybe he'll hear me. Maybe he's not too busy. Hey, God. Hey, I need some help down here, brother. Can you help me? No, when you treat it as a relationship, God is your father, okay? He's not a foreigner. He's a father, and he wants to talk to you. He wants to reason with you. He wants to be a part of your life. He cares about everything you care about, y'all. Everything you're going through, your kids, your, your bills, your job, everything. God cares about it. No matter how little it is or how big it is, he cares but so many of his kids are just running around doing everything else but sitting at the table with the Lord and saying, God, I love you. You have what I need. Why am I out here doing everything else to try to please everybody else that don't like you, or impress people that don't want to hang out with you, okay, instead of just hanging out with the one who really wants to give you everything you desire and let you live out your dream. The greatest life I've ever lived is a life for Jesus, y'all. Man, this is an adventure, Every day is a new day. God is doing things in my life all the time. I don't regret living this way. There is nothing out there in that world that makes me go, man, I wish I could do that. Man, that would be awesome if I could do that. That's man, Look, I love Jesus. He loves me. We're going to be together forever. I have seen people come and go. I've only been saved 30-something years, but I've seen people that go to church, and now they're not even in church no more. And if you're listening to me, I love you, but get your tail back in church. Hallelujah. Come on, man. God loves you, and he wants to be a part of your life. I would never leave him, and I encourage you. Man, Don't. if I was not a pastor, I would be in a church. I would be a pastor's best friend. I would be his best friend. I would love to do whatever he wants me to do. Save people. Serve people. Amen? That's just what I would do. It ain't because I'm a pastor. Friend, I, you couldn't keep me. I'm going on vacation looking for a church I can go to. I'm not looking for a place. Oh, no, we're on vacation now, man. man. Yeah, man I'm just chilling. No, 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 no. We got to be with God. So we want to don't doubt God, but be thankful for what he will do, what he said he will do. First Thessalonians, and he, you know, Dwayne said this earlier, First, uh, first Thessalonians 5.18. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. God will do what he said he would do for you. He just needs you and I to keep our faith and trust in him. Thanksgiving is the language of faith. Doubt God's word and you do without. Faith in God's word and you get what you need. As we close today, let's look at, at an example of someone who did not doubt God when it looked impossible that what God 
said was going to happen. In Romans 4, 19, there's only a couple verses, y'all. But this is the story of Abraham and Sarah. I'm sure many of y'all are aware that uh, God came to Abraham and Sarah and said that they were going to have a son, okay, uh, that, that Sarah was going to have a baby. Um, Sarah was 90 years old, and, and uh, you know, um, Abraham was about 100 years old. Don, do you have any friends that have had some babies lately, 85, 90? Huh? <laughs> it's not happening too much, is it? You know, 90-year-old women don't have babies, okay? So would they have had a reason to doubt what God promised them? I mean, really, seriously, y'all think about it. I mean, if you're 90 and you're a lady, which you're not, but when you get there and God taps you on the shoulder and said, hey, hey sweetheart, you're going to have a son. You ain't thinking about how excited you're going to be because you probably already had three or four kids and you're going, no, man, I know what them nut is. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, they had the reason to doubt. But I want you to hear what Paul wrote down, you know, as, as they were looking back at Abraham and them. In verse 19, it says, And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb. Her womb was dead, y'all. She ain't even been able to have kids. This is her first child. She's never had kids. He, Abraham, did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to. This is God. This should encourage you that there's nothing you can ask God for that can be impossible to him, okay, or knock him off his rocker. God will do what he said he would do. If he said it in this book right here, he will do it. I promise you guys, every single time. If he said that he would heal your body, and he did say in uh, uh, Leviticus that he is the God that healeth thee. He did say in 1 Peter 2.24 that I am Jesus, and by his stripes you were healed. He's gonna, he will do what he said he's going to do, okay? He will not lay, you know, not do it. So as we close, I just kind of shot down a few promises here that I just wanted to read to you. Um, some promises that I believe, and there's full of them, but I just want to give you a few of them. Um, because when God promises something, he will do it. Amen? Psalms 37, 4 and 5 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall... This is in the New King James Version. I didn't give these to you. Uh, these are all be... Well, they won't all be, but you can just put them up in the New King James. But delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord... Trust all in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He's going to bring it to pass, y'all. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's not just talking about money. There's a lot of things we need in this life, okay? And he will supply all of your need. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. King James says he will add it unto you, but he'll give you everything you need. Psalms 103, 2 through 5 in the New Living Translation, it says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins, and he heals all my diseases. How many sins does he forgive? How many diseases does he heal? All of them, y'all. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercy. You know, when you get saved, you never taste death. You will never taste death. Oh, can you believe? Man, Nathan, man, you know, he, he, he passed away. And, and I never tasted death. I won't taste what that sting feels like. I will never taste it. Now, y'all may be crying about how I died, but I can promise you I never tasted it. I'm in heaven. I will never. You will never. That's the great thing about being a Christian. He goes on to say, he redeemed me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercy. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Ain't that good news? That means as you get old, you have a verse that you can say, Lord, you renew my youth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, man. That's good. 1 Peter 2.24 says he personally carried our sins in his own body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. It says so we can be dead to sin. That means we don't need to keep sinning. We need to live to do what is right. But by his wounds, you are healed. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all of God's promises, in the New Living Translation, For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. He never says no to his promises. Never, y'all. In 2 Corinthians 2.14, which I just think is amazing, now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through in us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. This Thanksgiving day, this Thanksgiving week, 
Let's realize that as we go through life, that God has a table before us. We don't have to look to the world for anything. We can go straight to God. Amen. And I hope this has helped you today. But I do want you guys to know that your daddy wants to hear from you. He loves you. I just gave you some little points and little tips to actually take to the Father. But I promise you guys, I mean it with all my heart. If you will ask the Father, and you were, that's why I made these things right here. And I got something back on the table, okay? It's a record of God's faithfulness. It's where you can actually write down the date you prayed, your request from God, the scriptures you used, okay, and the date you received it. And then you can take this, and then you can file it. That way you can always pull it out and remember what the Lord has done for you. The Lord has things he wants to get to you. Do you know there are things in life, in this life, that God wants you to do? But he don't share them with a lot of his, his, his kids because they don't have the faith to believe him to do it. See, do you think that Abraham and Sarah would have received the word from God when they walked out of that country that they lived in? And he said, hey, Abraham and Sarah, you're going to actually have a baby in your 90s. And then you're going to offer him on an altar and you're going to kill him. Do you think they were ready to hear that? No, it was years later before God revealed that to Abraham. See, there's things that God has along our journey, and he's got things that are going to be amazing, but there's things that he's not sharing with us sometimes because our faith ain't there. We're not, re we're not ready to hear it. That's why we got to meditate on his word by day and by night. We got to get in his word. We can't grow weary and well-doing. This is the life, y'all. Now, I'm not saying be weird and not be normal and be a person you can talk to. You walk around, oh, I'm a Christian. I read the Bible. No, no, that's stupid, okay? I'm talking about getting in the Bible and letting it get in you. And watch what happens. There's things God wants to do for you. But you've got to be consistent with God. You can't be a yo-yo Christian, y'all. You can't be up one day, down the next day, up one day, down the next day. That don't work. You're either all in or you're not. Amen? And that's the way it needs to be. Hallelujah. So let's make a decision today. That we're going to be all in. Amen. Amen. Am I by myself? Are y'all with me? Yes. Everybody with me? Okay. Hallelujah. So let's all pray real quick. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for this day. And Father, I stand here as a vessel of yours. And Jesus, when you was alive on this earth, you went about doing good and healing all that were sick. That you went around and you prayed for people. You healed those that were deaf. You healed those that were blind. That had leprosy had issues of blood that were even dead. You brought them back to life. Well, Jesus, you have not changed. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never change. So, Father, today, as I stand here as a part of your body, I represent you on the earth. So if you're here today and you're experiencing any type of sickness or disease, you're experiencing any depression, you're experiencing anything that we talked about is an enemy. God is here to set you free. Today, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you want to come to Jesus, today's your day to make that decision. Or maybe you once knew Jesus, but you kind of walked away. You've kind of been doing your own thing. You can be like the prodigal son and you can come back home today. If that is you, I just want you to raise your hand and say, pray for me, Pastor. I want to come back home to Jesus or I want to be saved today. I want to give him my life. Today's the day of salvation. You don't want to hesitate. But if you're here. And some of these enemies have made their way into your life. And you want to see these enemies be gone. This is why Jesus came. I'm not Jesus. I'm just a part of the body. But his body. In the Bible. Brought healing and hope to the world. He's doing the same thing. Today. So if that is you and you need healing, you need help in any area, God is here to meet that need. You don't have to leave with it. God will heal you. He will deliver you. He will touch you. Whatever you need. Father, we love you today. We praise you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. You're such a good God. I love you. Holy Spirit, we just invite you here today. Minister to our hearts. Touch our minds. Touch our bodies. You're so good, Father. We love you today.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for Brother Don and him coming here today. Thank you, Lord, for bringing him to this house. I ask you, Father, to touch him in Jesus' name. Give him strength to walk out his days. He would continue to glorify you in his body. He would continue to walk as you walk, Father. Give him strength. He's a light in this world. He's got so much knowledge, so much experience that the world around him needs. I just thank you, Lord, for leading him into places to where he can share his love for you and your love for him. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, thank you, Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. How many of y'all ready to leave? And get a few days. Don't be too quick, Nicky. Jake's like, I'm out of here, brother. You ain't got to tell me twice. I'm gone, brother. No, nah, Jake's just doing stuff. Hallelujah. I want to say this from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for letting me be a pastor to you. I count it an honor. I really do. I love being your pastor. Me and Belinda both. We love being your pastor. And we're here for you guys, man. We really are. Anything you need, anything you need to talk to somebody. We're never too busy. We're always here. If you don't have our number, then come up and get, get our number. I mean, we would love to talk to you. Sabay, Logan, any of y'all. Okay? We want to talk to y'all. You ever need somebody. Sometimes you need to call people with gray hair. <laughs> There's a reason why we got gray hair, brother. Come on, hallelujah. But it's good to have people like that in your life. So really, seriously, we are honored to, to be your pastors, and we just count it a great joy, okay? I do want to encourage you to continue to be faithful to church. Be faithful. Not for my sake. It's for your sake, y'all. Be faithful. I'm telling you, God has things to give you when you come to church. I mean, this is, it's the first day of the week. It's almost like we're giving our first to God on Sunday morning. It matters to God, and I promise you, it will matter to you. And sometimes I know our flesh, we bring it in here and we're tired and we're just, you know, we just want to, you know, chill out sometimes. Man, drag yourself here, I promise you, through worship, through the word, through the fellowship with other believers. You will get something when you come, I promise you, every single time. So please, be faithful, okay? And again, it's not about me being able to say, wow, we had a full crowd. No, it's not about that, okay? Because I would serve God if his house was empty. It's not about me. I'm going to serve God regardless. But together, we're better, Amen. It does make it fun to serve with people in a chair versus a chair. I mean, all right, chairs, y'all give it up for Jesus. I'd have to have J-Rod hit some applause or something. And we'd have to, we'd have to pump in some noise. Hallelujah. But anyway, you guys can stand. And um, you got something you want to say, baby? Okay, you just had a mic here. But again, we do want to get with Belinda if you want to be a part of Christmas, you know, Christmas Child, uh, or, or Miss Connie if you want to get involved with the, the, the foster kids there. And I think it's cans and canned foods and things like that. And then uh, Miss Mary with the backpacks and the, uh, you know, the suitcases and stuff to help that. Let's, let's be a blessing to some people this year. Find out how the Lord would lead you to be a part of something like that. And, just get it. and if you would like to... Uh, you know, give to Samuel anytime uh, over the next, you know, throughout the rest of the year. I may not say a lot about it, but, but Samuel, uh, he, he really needs your prayers and he needs finances, okay? And as a church, we can only do so much, and we do, but he, he really needs help. I mean, he's trying to pay rent on his bill, and it's only $500 a month, but he's having a difficult time there. So during this Christmas season, if you would like to, you know, give some to Samuel, just, you know, do it by texting church or whatever, and just put on there for Samuel, and all the money goes to him, but I can promise you, man, he's trying to help 130 plus orphans uh, without any help, and I mean, it, you can tell he's, he's trying to stay in faith, but he's also, you know, let me know what he needs, uh, but, but again, that's just, you know, one outreach that we really could this, this you know, Christmas, if the Lord tugs on your heart, to do that, uh, I know he would appreciate that a whole bunch. So let me pray over you guys. And uh, does anybody got something that you're thankful for before we leave? Just yell it out. Family? Did you say? Logan. Logan.